So this function, a function does nothing alone and by itself because nothing has told this function to run. You have to actually tell functions to run. So to tell this function to run, what we did is we created an event listener right up here. What an event listener is, it just, you tell it what object to listen for, then add event listener so that it knows to listen for something. You tell it what to listen for right here use a comma and then tell it what to do after it hears what it's supposed to so it's listening for a mouse event dot click so the user's mouse clicking on the button right here okay so now we tell it to go to my function this is specifying an event handler so this is an event listener that listens for the event then we have my function down here, which is the event handler. It handles the event once it happens, tells it what to do. So let's go ahead and run this code just to give you a brief introduction of what would actually happen. So we go down here. We have our stage. We have our button with hello on it. And now you click hello. And as you can see, it listened for the event and then added the store was closed up at zero zero coordinates and in flash it actually goes from this is y this is x and it starts at zero zero up here and grows this way with x so a higher number of x would go this way and then a higher number of y would go down so it starts at the default coordinates which is fine I'll go ahead and change that for you real quick just so you can get an idea so to change that we just want to add Right in here, we'd want to add my text, underscore text. Sorry, the mouse is in the way. There you go. And then dot x, which is the x position, equals, we'll say, 100. My text, underscore text, dot y, which is the y positioning, equals 100. And now we'll go ahead and save. Okay, I'm actually going to cancel because you don't need to save to run the program. But it's always good to save after every change. Go ahead and hit Command Enter or Control Enter if you're on a PC. And now we have our nice little hello button. You click it, and now the store is closed. It comes down here instead. Alright, so moving on. I'm going to show you how to do comments real quick. There's two ways to do comments. There is doing a block of comments, which is where, like, say you wanted to highlight out multiple lines. How you highlight out multiple lines is you do a forward slash star and then a star forward slash. And all of this is a comment. Okay, so all of that's going to be a comment. Comments are great. They're awesome. Use them. You probably will, will end up ignoring that device because I did when I was, first started programming stuff. But comments let you know exactly what you're trying to accomplish every step of the way. Add them at the top of your functions, event listeners, add them everywhere. Because if you come back to code six months later, you'll be able to look at it and know exactly what you're trying to do and accomplish, even if you didn't finish the project. Also, to add a single line comment, it's just forward slash forward slash, and then your comment here. And I normally add a forward slash forward slash at the end with a space in between it right here. And mainly, that's just because it looks cool. So, for the most part, that's pretty much all I'm going to cover. I'm going to, I am going to cover conditional statements real quick. And what a condi conditional statement is is it's like say you have a actually we'll go ahead and do it in this function and we will say if variable i which is a number that equals zero is 
less than or e or sorry greater than or equal to um, six. And this shouldn't be greater than. This should be less than. Less than or equal to six. Then i is plus. What this does is just goes ahead and increments this this variable uh, by one i by one, and that's the plus plus is just an incrementer. So what you'd want to do now is just tell it to do something trace i trace statements are something that I should have gone over a little bit earlier. Basically, it allows you to trace inside your program without outputting it to where the user can see it, but you can see it in your output window. Go ahead and show you that, assuming that this works okay, which it does not. One second here. Sorry about that, guys. Forgot to uh, throw in. You can't see it now. There you go. I forgot to throw in the semicolon here. So it's for variable i, which is a number, equals. Oh, and there's also one more problem here. Didn't capitalize that, which is a number equal to zero. Then i is less than or equal to zero, or less than or equal to six, sorry. Increment i by one. And then we're gonna trace i, and boom. So, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's also another problem. I'm trying to show you an if statement when it should be a for statement. There we go. Okay. So now we should be able to go to our output window. And when I click hello, it'll tell it to go ahead and initiate that function, which shows 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, incrementing the value by 1. So there's a, basically a conditional statement. Um, this is actually a loop, so I'll go over conditional statements, which is basically more along the lines of if five or if my text underscore text uh, dot y equals one hundred. Or sorry, that's x equals 100. Then do this. And what I'm going to tell it to do is trace my text underscore text dot x. And then else so if it's not then trace please check x value we'll just go ahead and make this x Okay, so please check x value. Need to add a semicolon at the end, and boom. Uh, one second here. Equals two is used with two equal signs. So you want to make sure that you do that and not just use one like I did. I forget quite often.